All right, guys. So welcome back to the Direct Farm Marketing Podcast. And today you've got me, your host, Mike Parker, with our client success manager and co-host, Amanda Berkey. And we're really excited today, guys, to talk to you about something that's going to be a huge change in the way that your clients view your products and the way that you communicate about your products. And this single change is going to be a night and day difference on how your clients start to view you, your farm, and your offerings. So that's what we're going to dive into a little bit today. Um, Quickly, though, um, Amanda, if you would, let's kind of recap what we talked about in our last episode together. I know we've had a few guests on since then, but the last time me and you were together was the first episode where we talked a little bit about building that customer database and then how that segments into what we're talking about today. Yeah, Mike, last episode, um, we talked about the importance of a targeted customer database, um, you know, really finding those people um, that are looking for you and your product and how important that is. We talked about a couple different ways that you can find those um, organically uh, through footwork and also through paid ads and other avenues. Um, so the importance of that database, um, you know, this week we're going to talk about um, how to utilize that database. Um, and and where to get started with that and how to approach that really. Yeah, yeah. So if you guys, if you haven't listened, that's episode one where we talked about building your customer database and the importance of doing that. As Amanda mentioned, we talked you through a little bit of strategies and some different ways you guys can do that. And today, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about how we can strategically position our products to our dream customers or to our customer database as a solution to their goals and desires. Now that might sound funny um, to present our products as a solution. You might be thinking, I've got chicken, pork, beef, um, whatever it is your farm produces, what can that solve for my clients? And so to answer that question, we gotta kind of go back to um, the very beginning of number one is why are our clients buying from us in the first place? And then number two, what, what is it that they are seeking out in their own life? So, you know, Amanda, I'll pick on you here a bit. Um, If you guys have listened to any of our stuff, you've probably heard me say that, you know, moms are a lot of your guys' dream customers, Um, not only moms specifically, but that homeschool mom. And Amanda just so happens to be a mom and a homeschool mom. So I'm going to kind of kick it to you, Amanda, from your perspective. Um, I know there's some differences, but from your perspective, why is it that a mom would buy from a local farm? Yeah, so we got to think about, you know, as a client or customer perspective, like who are they, what's important to them, like you said, and like for me as a mom, you know, I'm a 30 something year old mom of two, um, and one of mine homeschools, um, and, you know, as I'm meal planning throughout the week or at the beginning of the week, rather, um, it's important to me to know what I'm putting on the plates of my family, you know, not only what I'm eating, but what I'm feeding my children, um, what that that's going to do for them in the long run. Cause a big thing right now is the lack of nutrition in our foods. So if I know that I'm feeding something that is, you know, pasture raised and, um, you know, that's free of, whatever, you know, I, I just want to make sure that that that's a good, healthy meal for my family. Um, and so sourcing that and knowing what's in it, knowing where it came from, knowing how it was raised, like those are all things that are really important to me. Um, so, and I, and millions of other moms, you know, that's, that's a big thing right now. And we've really seen that revolutionize in the last, you know, well, I'd say three years, you know, people are starting to wonder, you know, what they're buying at the grocery store, what's in it, you know, um, so that's a big thing uh, for me and and I feel like almost every other mom out there. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that perspective. So guys, what I want to do is I want to start to paint this picture for us. I'm going to, I'm going to ask Amanda some questions and get an idea of maybe what we call some of her pain points would be. She kind of already shared some of them, right? When she's making dinner, she's concerned what her family's eating. That would be a pain point, right? So it's a concern of hers. It's probably a concern of a lot of your other clients too. What are they eating? So when we start to take this pain point and we introduce this idea of selling solutions and not products, we're positioning our product as a solution to that pain point. So if we raise food, um, regardless of our farming practices, if we're transparent in them and someone like Amanda can be, she can trust those practices or at least trust us as the farmer, the producer, then we are solving and we're positioning our product 
as a solution, now it's up to us through our marketing, through our emails, our website, our social media to present our products as a solution. We can do that by the way we talk about our products, um, just some of the transparency in the way we raise our products. Um, and a few different things we'll dive to, into here in a second. But I want to ask Amanda some questions just as kind of a practice, guys, um, to give you an example as we kind of are using Amanda as a, um, a, an example, if you will towards our clients or your potential clients that are out there. So Amanda, you mentioned that what your family's eating, that would be a pain point. Um, what about, you know, just health overall, just general family health? Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately in a lot of close friends and family, we're seeing a raise in disease and cancers and all those things, you know, and, and that's, really, you know, a parent's worst nightmare. And so, you know, it's important to know, you know, the value of, of what you're putting on your plate. You know, it's, it's a whole health perspective. It's not just nutrition. It's, you know, what are these byproducts that are in our food? What are they doing to us, you know, at a cellular level? Um, you know, what risks does that pose for me and my family, for my children and, you know, and their future? So there's so much that goes into that, you know, um, beyond just the nutritional value of your food. Sure, sure. So I'm hearing a concern from a mother who's worried about her kid's future. She's worried about her family's health. She's worried about being able to trust and provide something. So maybe places like Walmart or, you know, the grocery stores, there's, you know, the big packers, right? That you hear all these rumors. I know as a consumer, it can be tough. As a mom, it can be tough. You hear, hey, our food is not even grown in the United States. They may be introducing mRNA vaccines to our food, all these different things that as a mom, right, your goal is to take care of the family, right? You know, provide nutrition for the family, raise right. the family in a healthy environment. These are all things that are stressors towards your goals that you need now to search and find a solution for. Right. Yeah. And if, if and I then, know that, that what I'm sourcing, what I'm feeding my family, if I know personally, you know, if I've made a connection with that farmer or rancher, and I know exactly the ins and outs of their operation and, and the value of their product, I'm going to feel a lot better about putting that on the dinner plate. You know what I mean? And, and that relieves stress for me as a mom and us moms, we're always stressed out to the max, right? So any, any bit of relief of stress is, is, you know, invaluable to us. Absolutely. And I'll throw another thing out there at moms, because I see moms do this all the time. And moms are the real MVPs um, for all of us, right? Um, is you guys always put everyone else first. You put the family first, put the kids first, um, everyone in your life you put first, but you also have your own health and you know wellness to consider, um, your own life to consider. And so improving your own health, although it might take the backseat to everybody else, it's also still something you'd like to do, right? You, you want to make sure that you're healthy and you're, you know, in the best, um, you know, position to, you know, live life with your kids and have, you know, a healthy life, you know, you know, free from chronic illness, disease, X, Y, Z, but also, you know, just to be able to be vibrant, right. To be healthy, not to be tired all the time and, you know, can't get up from the sofa because you don't feel good and, you know, whatever that might look like. So explain that to me a little bit, as far as, you know, seeking out maybe solutions for your own health, whether that's, you know, whatever that journey looks like for you, maybe your other friends or moms that you guys talk about. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it kind of takes a back seat. So, I mean, it's not something that's always at the forefront front of the mind, but that's true. You know, being able to keep up with kids and work a full-time job and homestead because we homestead here at our, our house and, um, you know, all of that is taxing. And so, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, what you're eating is just as important as your children so that you can, you know, be there for them and take care of them and have the energy and, like you said, vibrance to do that. Um, and I think that that's kind of also another big point that, you know, the health industry, the fitness industry, the weight loss industry, like those are all, those have all been huge, strong industries for as long as any of us can remember. Right. And so, you know, a lot of moms are on that journey of like becoming healthier, becoming more fit, you know, and that is also a realization of what they're eating, what they're consuming, you know? Um, and so if they can source things that are, you know, good for them and their family and for their spouse, you know, um, those are all really important things. And again, you know, really sell that solution to that pain point. So if we think about 
food is food is medicine, but then also food as uh, as a not just a solution, but also a way to get fitter. You mentioned that you know those moms looking to get fitter, right? Maybe they've had kids, their kids are starting to grow up, they're getting back to work, they're look, looking to maybe lose a little weight, get fitter, that sort of thing, and they're on that journey. And the the um, as you mentioned, more of the commercial fitness marketing is kind of some of the things they're consuming. And there's a lot of stuff talks about diet and they're learning, they're, they're, they're seeking things out. And we know as producers that our food that we're producing, that's coming fresh straight off the farm, you can't compare it to what's at the grocery store. And so if we can start to position our real food as a solution towards that young mom, older mom, and it doesn't have to be a mom, guys. I know we're going to sell to a lot of other people, but we're just using this as a, as one narrow specific example. But if we can position our products as real food to help them reach their fitness and wellness goals, again, that's kind of what we're looking at here in this idea of, you know, selling a solution and not a product, if that makes sense. Right. Um, right. Well, and we've talked about disease too, you know, I, I, can't even tell you how many people my age that I know that are fighting different diseases and cancers, you know, themselves. And so, um, you know, people are learning a whole new way of life of cooking from scratch and overcoming, you know, the trials that they are now enduring because of nutritional or lack of nutritional, I should say, um, in their food. So, um, that's, you know, that's another big thing is, you know, people are not only just on a fitness journey, but a whole health journey to, to reclaim their health, really. Sure. Absolutely. So now guys, we asked Amanda some questions. You heard perspective from a mom, um, from a homeschooling mom, from a young mom with a young family. Um, you've heard some of her pain points, right? She mentioned she wants, you know, to provide you know, food she can trust for her family. She wants to provide nutrient dense food for her family. She wants to improve her own health and wellness. Um, she wants to provide real food for her family. And, you know, that's free of all the things that we kind of talked about. So as we start to look at that, guys, you're, you're hearing directly a perspective from a customer that should be like right in the dead center target of who you're trying to target. So now if we want to start to look at what does that mean? What does that do for us? What do we do with this information? Okay. So this is the idea of selling solutions and not products. We want to start to position our product as a solution to all of these pain points. Those pain points, again, are those things that Amanda and moms like Amanda and your clients are looking for. They're the things that they're trying to solve in their life, right? So they're going through their life. They're not thinking about, hey, you know, I need to go buy some pasture-raised chicken, right? I need to get healthier. I got to buy pasture-raised chicken. That's not what they're thinking. In their mind, they're thinking, I need to get healthier, right? I need healthy food, right? And so if we can position our product to them during their daily lives, whether that's through a social media post, maybe it's through an email that they get, and it comes across in a way that has positioned our food as a solution. So I want you guys to think about a email title for me. Okay. So it's, we're going to dive into like, let's say email as an example. So let's say we send an email title title to Amanda or someone like Amanda. And that email title just says something super simple, like, Hey, our ground beef is back in stock. Come buy our ground beef. Or, um, are you ready to, you know, taste the best beef of your life or our farm to table ground beef? I'm giving you guys some generic ideas. Amanda's going to see that and she's not going to put two and two together, right? She's busy. She's got a lot going on. She's not now seeing your beef as a solution. She's just saying, oh, that's great. They got ground beef. I, I, I'll see ground beef when I get to the grocery store next. She's got kids running around. She's got life going on, things going on. But now let's just change that email title to simply say, are you tired of beef from the grocery store with labels that you can't trust? Now that email title is now speaking to Amanda. We're talking to her directly and we're speaking to her, positioning our product as a solution to one of her biggest problems. And that's not being able to provide food for her family that she trusts. So as a mom, Amanda, if you see something like that, you feel like you're being spoken to, what does that right. make you feel like? Yeah, you're calling out that pain point, you know, <clears throat> so calling out that pain point, addressing that pain point, like, that's what's going to grab my attention, you know, and, um, you know, selling that solution to that pain point is what's important. That's going to grab anyone's attention, you know, that, that that speaks to. Um, the other thing is, too, is, you know, reliability, you know, 
The other hand on that is branding and like recognizing a brand. If I see an email that pops up, like you said, that's so generic and it's not from a brand that I recognize, it's not from someone I trust or know or feel like I have a connection to, um, it's also not going to mean as much to me. So there's a whole other hand to that too. Um, But like you said, touching and and realizing that pain point and I'm speaking for, not speaking for myself, but if, if you title it in a way like that, that you might touch on a pain point that they don't even realize is a pain point yet. You know, they might not be thinking about that or have that on their mind. But when you see all these different things that are on social media and the news, um, and they're in the back of your mind, you know, um, and then you see this email that talks about it, you know, and it gives you a solution to that stressor. That's that's going to be um, an immediate interest and a really high point of conversion too. Absolutely. So I'll give you guys another example. Um, you know, I, you may have heard me mention, may not have heard me mention our program for my personal farm, our chicken for the year program. I've shared that a bunch in a lot of our content. But we do a pre-sold program where our customers can buy our chicken for the year, and we push it really hard around the New Year's. So we're right here. Christmas is right around the corner. We're actually recording this on Thursday. Christmas is on Monday. So by the time you guys listen to this, I hope you all had a merry Christmas with your families. Um, but I will. And happy new year right around the corner. But I will say that the way we craft those emails and our email titles and all of our headlines, even on our landing pages that we covered um, in that pre-sold season ebook, if you guys haven't got that, it is available for free, for free download for you. You can get that. I know there's a, um, a link to that in my Instagram bio, Direct Farm Marketing. I'm sorry, the handle is not Direct Farm Marketing. It is Direct Farm Roadmap is the handle. Nope, Direct Farm Marketing. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> the, the handle is Direct Farm Marketing. And there is a link to that in that bio. I'll also link it down here in the show notes. But I want to give you guys uh, an example of the headline that we use. So instead of saying, hey, we got pre sold chicken for the year, you can buy, you know, you can pre order our chicken, right? Again, kind of landing on deaf ears. I'm not really um, connecting that to the customer. There's no connection. If I change that title to, hey, are you looking for a way? to commit to the new year's resolutions that you've made to providing healthier food for your family in 2024, question mark, our chicken for the year is a great way to do that. Now, everything's changed, right? The whole conversation's changed, the connection's changed, and that's kind of what we're talking about here. I know it's a little bit of an abstract um, marketing idea of selling solutions and not products, and it took me a long time to really grasp it, But this idea of the way we communicate about our products is going to change. Amanda mentioned brand. It's going to change the way that customers think about us. They're going to be, they're going to feel more connected to us because they're going to feel like we're actually speaking to things that matter to them on a personal level. Right. And making that connection. And on the other hand of that, Mike, you're selling security too. You know, that's another stress that most families have these days is, you know, something we experienced in 2020 was grocery stores selling out and shutting down and shipping stopping. And, you know, and if, if you're relying on, on that e-commerce or commerce of, um, shipment foods, you know, foods that are being shipped in from all over the world or all over the country, you know, you don't have that local, a supply of security. So, you know, on with your guys' product, that chicken for the year, you're providing a sense of security because they know that they will always have food throughout the year. Um, and same with like a fill your freezer. Instead of just saying, you know, fill your freezer for 2024, you can say, you know, fill your fill your freezer with grass fed beef, you know, um, that's going to sell a sense of security and make that connection with your with your target audience. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys, you know, I mean, part of me as a marketer, obviously, like I have to be careful because I don't want to make claims that are unfounded or I don't want to use, um, you know, fear tactics to sell something. But it is very much so a reality. We saw the food system break down. And if you want to guarantee food for your family in 2024, 
our whole and half beef deposits are a great way to do that. That's why a lot of people buy a whole beef is because they want to go ahead and know that their freezer chest is full of beef and they've got that food security. No matter right. what the beef prices do in the store, no matter what goes on, they've got their beef. And so that's a reality that many people live in as Amanda just kind of spoke to. If we can start to position the product as that, guys, again, we're building that connection on a higher level. So I'll segment that into the next piece um, is once we are selling solutions and not products, once we do a good job of that, our, our customers are going to start to not only view our products as products, they're not going to see it as, oh, they're selling ground beef. Oh, they're selling chicken. They're going to start to see your products that you're producing on your farm as an actual gateway to the outcomes that they are looking to achieve. So we just mentioned the food security thing. It might be a personal health for that mom, that dad, or whoever that is, or whoever the caretaker is in the house, um, the food they're providing for a family. It might provide a gateway to that, but they're going to start to view your product as what helps them achieve that, not just chicken anymore. It's not just beef, right? It's food security. It's trustworthy food. It's nutrient-dense food. It's these things that go deeper and connect deeper than right. just a product sitting on a grocery store shelf. Exactly. Yeah. You want to touch those deeper levels of, you know, emotional pain points. So, um, and that's really a way to, to get a higher sense of conversion and trust in your, in your customer and your database, um, and your target audience. Absolutely. So thank you for that, Amanda, kind of touched on a few different places we can use this idea. So when we start to sit down, we start to look at pain points, we start to look at solutions, and we can start to think about where and how can we use them. We've given you guys some examples like via email, but we can also do this right on our website. So like our headings on our website, even our subheadings, right? We can do this in our product descriptions on our websites. Uh, we sell a um, pasture raised chicken bone broth that is made from our chicken feet. So it's packed with collagen. Okay. So with that product in our product description on our website, we talk about how that's a great way to boost your collagen intake. If you're looking to, you know, if you're a mom or a female in general, who's looking to, you know, hair, skin and nails, right. Increase that collagen intake, um, boost your gut health. You know, Hey, are you looking for a great way to boost your gut health? Our chicken bone broth is a great way to do that. So Again, product descriptions, website, emails, social media posts, um, reels, anywhere you're talking about your product or you're talking to your customers, you can use these. So something that we want to share with you guys that Amanda and I both thought would be a great resource for you guys is our 30 proven hooks and headlines. Now, this is actually something taken straight from our Direct Farm Roadmap course. All of our coaching clients get this and our course um, attendees get this, you get lifetime access to this when you join the course, but this is specifically one of the downloads from the course. And this is 30 hooks and headlines, which is essentially hooks are something that, you know, grabs someone's attention, pulls them in. It's kind of like a headline and you'll get 30 of these. These are in a Google doc. I'll read you guys a couple examples, but they're basically fill in the blank that you can use again on emails, on your website, these are really, really good in social media posts. So you guys take advantage of this. Um, they're also really good. I, I don't know if I, I might have already said emails, but they're really great in emails as well. Um, so here's the first one. It's, you know, what if you could blank and that blank is for a desire. So what if you could blank desire without blank pain? So we talked about all those desires, right? What if you could buy healthy food without pain? going to the grocery store. What if you could buy healthy food without going to the grocery store? Solution, we ship directly to your house from a farm that you can trust, right? So that's just number one. You can fill those blanks in with other desires and other pains, but that's one of the 30. Um, and there's 30 of those that are just, they're all different. They have, um, you know, different fill in the blanks, different desires, different pain points, but you guys take advantage of that. That download link's going to be in the show notes to a Google doc where you guys can take those. You can use them. You can make them your own for your emails, website, product descriptions, all the things that we've mentioned. I think they'll be really, really valuable to you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you kind of touched on this too, but 
take advantage of of those hooks and headlines and use them to educate your audience also. You know, some people might not know what chicken feet are good for. You know, some people might not know what collagen, what benefits collagen has and an increase of collagen. Um, so make sure that you're utilizing um, all that content creation with those hooks and headlines and selling pain points uh, or selling solutions to pain points to educate your audience too. You know, why, why is your, what your product is, better than what's in the grocery store, you know, educate. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's the idea with the hook and headline, right? You're hooking their attention, you're grabbing it with the headline, and then you can do, as Amanda said, fill it with really good content, right? If you don't ever have a hook or a headline that grabs their attention, then you don't get the opportunity for them to read your rest of your email. You can sit down and write a really great email, but if you don't have a great hook or headline to pull their attention in, they're no not going to read it. it. And so that's what you guys, yeah. That's what you guys can use those hooks and headlines for. Be really, really good. Um, yeah. I want to share, guys, with you a little bit about our New Year's program that's coming up, uh, our New Year's coaching program that's coming up. But before I do, um, I want to ask Amanda if, if you have anything else to add to this idea of selling solutions or anything else before we kind of move towards wrapping up here. No, um, Mike, I think we pretty much covered it. You know, it's just really about getting to know your audience. You know, who are they? What's important to them? Why would they buy your product? Um, or why have they bought your product? You know, a lot of ways to come up with those pain points and solution is to look at who your customers currently are. You know, why have they purchased from you in the past? And, you know, who's your lookalike audience? So those are all things to really think about and dive deep on, like you said, into a deeper level as to why, why they would buy from you. Why would they trust you? Absolutely. That's great. Um, yeah, guys. I mean, I recommend going deep down this rabbit hole. Really take time. Think about the pain points. Start to write solutions. Use those hooks and headlines. It takes time to develop. Um, good material for this, but definitely get started on that. So as I mentioned, guys, we're doing a special for our coaching program. Now it's a 16 week coaching program. We're going to walk you through everything that we've talked about on this podcast. We're going to take you from the very beginning on how to find new customers, how to cultivate those customers, how to build a website that's going to do a great job converting those customers into sales. You'll be able to integrate things like shipping. You'll get 80% off of your shipping labels actually through the partner program on building your website with us and the Shopify platform. We're going to teach you guys how to automate your emails, how to you know use the hooks and headlines to craft emails that are engaging, that grab attention, that speak to pain points. We're going to teach you how to run profitable paid advertising and so much more in the 16-week program where every single week, me and Amanda are going to be walking you through how to do each of these things. And we're going to start the next one this new year. We're starting on January 9th, taking a new group through the training program. Again, walking you guys through each of this. It's a great time to go ahead and get started because at the end of that 16 weeks, you're going to be right in the middle of your growing um, season and right in the middle of starting the year. And so if you can get a great foundation built out for you going into this next season, it's a tremendous time to do it. Um, and, you know, really the implications that could come from setting this up and taking the time to do it are huge on what 2024 could do for your farm, your ranch, or your operation. I'm sure I missed something out. So I'll let Amanda clean up for me there. Um, then we'll get I wrapped up. I think you got it pretty much covered. Yeah. Now's the time to do it. You know, like you said, if you can get started now and really implement all the things that are included in the roadmap and have our, you know, opportunity to have Mike and I walk you through step by step, um, you know, that means that there's no getting stuck along the way doing it yourself because we're right there to hold your hand along the way. Um, um, and everything from, you know, curating that farm story to really being able to connect with your target audience um, and then pre-selling your your products. And right now is the time to get that set up and going so that you're ready to go when that first harvest is ready to sell. Awesome, you guys. So just so you know, that link will be in the show notes as well to join the 2024 coaching program. Um, look forward to seeing you guys in there. And just so you know, we are doing a $500 discount. So we both left oh, that yeah. out. I didn't yes. forget, <laughs> I didn't forget that. You save $500. Yep. And you, you can save $500, save $500 deposit. Yep. That's right. Absolutely. So I think that wraps us up here. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, thank you for your time. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.